Hi, I'm Simon Mole and I am a poet. I'm also a huge dinosaur fan. From the long necked leaf munchers as big as buses, to the little feathery fighters with beaks and all of the rest in between. Some dinosaurs seem so incredible, so unlikely, so wonderfully weird, that it's easy to forget the most amazing thing about them. They actually existed, stomping and scuttling their way around the very same planet that we live on today. Some gobbled huge mouthfuls of meat in one go. Some nibbled at leaves and plodded round slow. Some were tall as a tower. Some scuttled down low. Can you spot any dinosaurs you already know? Some had claws long as swords on their fingers or toes. Some had clubs on their tails to deal dangerous blows. Some had horns to give warning, more just for show. Can you spot any dinosaurs you already know? Some huddled in herds. Some travelled solo, through rainforests, dry deserts, through ice and through snow, and you won't quite believe just how big they could grow. Can you spot any dinosaurs you already know? One of my favourite dinosaurs is the Diplodocus, those giant vegetarians uh, with the long noodly necks. One thing that I love about them is that they travelled in herds, hundreds and hundreds together. This poem is in my book, A First Book of Dinosaurs, and I try to imagine what it might have been like to be part of that herd. A herd means nuzzling necks, thousands of tails that talk with flicks and swishes and thwacks. A herd means sticking together no matter what, leaving that last luscious leaf for another mouth to munch. A herd means feeling at home, wherever you are. A soft, tingly glow in your tummy, knowing you belong. The theme of National Poetry Day this year is refuge, which means safety or shelter. Now, when I'm not feeling so good, it's often my family or my friends who help me feel loved and safe and more positive. I take refuge with them. A bit like the dinosaurs in that herd. Uh, they get safety from moving together as a group. They're less likely to come under attack from a hulking, drooling Allosaurus. And it was probably more fun with other dinos to hang out with. Today, you're going to be writing a poem about your herd. Now, there's probably a few herds or groups or communities that you're part of. So the first thing is going to be deciding which one you want to write about. That might be a group of friends. It might be a sports team that you're part of, your class at school, your family at home. Once you've decided, you're going to pop it as a title at the top of your page. My herd, dragonfly class or my herd, the moles. Pause the video to get your title down and then hit play when you're ready to get started. Okay, first up, I want to know what things do you do with your herd when you're together? For my family, that might mean country walks, movie nights, board games. For a football team, it could be passing drills, kick-ups, team talks. If you want to, you can start your sentence with a herd means or a herd is. But it's your poem, so if you can think of another way to say it, that's great too. Pause the video now to note down a few ideas of stuff that your herd like doing together and then hit play when you're ready to move on. Awesome. Now you're going to note down something about the food that you enjoy with your herd. For my family, that might be popcorn on the sofa or bowls of breakfast cereal before bed because for some reason we always have cereal as an evening snack. But for a football team, it might be juicy half-time oranges or a tasty treat after the game. Try and be as descriptive as you can here. Even one or two adjectives will make a big difference. Pause the video to get your ideas down and then hit play when you're ready for our next question.
Nice one. Next up, I want to know if there were any things that might occasionally happen in your herd that are harder or less enjoyable. In my house, occasionally there's a bit of a squabble over what to watch on TV, or I annoy my kids by making them tidy their rooms. For a football team, that might mean everyone wants to take the penalty, or you lose an important game. Pause the video to get your thoughts down, and then hit play when you're done. Great stuff, and well done. Next, I want to know about some kind or loving things that you'll hear do for each other. In the poem, I talk about the dinosaurs nuzzling necks or leaving the last luscious leaf for another mouth to munch. So it might be something that you do, like emptying the dishwasher even when you're tired or helping your little sister with her reading. Or it might be something that you do to show affection, like snuggles on the sofa or bedtime stories or fist bumps, high fives, whatever you like. Pause the video to get your thoughts down and then hit play when you're ready to move on. Great stuff, nearly there. What are the rules or the code of your herd? In the dinosaur poem, I say that a herd means sticking together no matter what. For a football team, it might be playing as a team until the final whistle. Um, in my family, we always try and remember that everyone makes mistakes sometimes. So I might include something like that as part of our code. Pause the video to note down some rules for your herd and then hit play when you're ready for our final question. Okay, last question, and I think it's a good one. What does it feel like to be part of your herd? What does it mean to you? In the dinosaur poem, I talked about feeling at home wherever you are. A soft, tingly glow in your tummy, knowing you belong. You might start off thinking that your herd makes you feel safe or happy or loved, but then I want to know what does that actually feel like? Where in your body do you feel it? Is it tingly fireworks in your head? A calm breath leaving your lungs? A fuzzy feeling in your chest? Who knows? Pause the video to note down what it feels like to be part of your herd and then hit play when you're ready to have some fun turning your answers into your poem. Okay, so in a moment you're going to read your answers back to yourself and you might find it is sounding like a poem already. In which case, boom, well done. I find at this point I like to add a bit of detail to at least one or two of my answers. Maybe the bowl of popcorn on the sofa becomes a giant bowl of sweet and salty popcorn with everyone grabbing huge handfuls at once. The tiny but important details that are going to make it easy for your reader or your listener to imagine what you're talking about. Those specific things that make the poem be about your herd. You might want to change the order of your answers. Maybe you want to take one of them out completely, or you want to add in something new that I didn't even ask about. It is your poem, so it is totally up to you. However it turns out, I would love to read it, so please do whack it up as a comment underneath the video. Thanks for watching.